Hi everybody, Hi. it's Mike. And I'm Wes. Uh, and we're Two Dads UK. Um, now, you've, you're honoured to have him again, because you can probably see he dips in and out of these ones because he's normally got the kids, um, but they are both asleep, so... Well, we're hoping they stay asleep. We're, yeah, we're we hoping. don't get any little visitors like the BBC. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, today's episode... Mm-hmm. We have known this gorgeous lady um, for probably getting on for, what do you reckon, about nine, ten months now, a little bit longer? Yeah, close to a year, probably. Um, And I know there's a lot of you that follow this account. So I'm going to be joined by Laura Rose, and she heads up a fab account doing some incredible things called the LGBT Mummies Tribe. And... I guess, in an essence, they do very, very similar work to what we do from a two dads perspective, and they do from a a mum's and a two mum's perspective. So I am really chuffed to speak to her. She's so glam. She's making us look like absolute scrubs. (laughs) (laughs) Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good, thank you. You look lovely. I did have a wash just for you too. This you is all. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's it's done good. It's made you look fab. Wash down locks, look, yeah. wash, lockdown washes, and make you look great. <laughs> yeah, clearly. It's the only the fourth time I've worn makeup in the whole three months. So yeah, it's <gasps> shocking. Oh my Here's goodness! The They're like, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where, where are you going, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> going to arrive. so um for anyone that's not following um clearly they need to tell us about your account and why you set up the lgbt mummies tribe so the lgbt mummies tribe is an organization to support lgbt plus women on their journey through motherhood whether it be they already have a family or they're looking to start a family by fertility treatment, adoption, fostering, if they're in a new relationship and they're becoming a stepmom, if they're a single parent, um, any which way that they're becoming a parent and a mother. Um, And what we do is educate, share, celebrate those relationships. So we have a community of women, so worldwide that they can meet. We have events once a year that women can come together with their families or their bumps or to, you know, make friends with other families just that look like them. Um, And we have support groups. So we support them from, in some respects, the beginning of the journey right through to the end. So we have trying to conceive support groups, pregnancy support groups, non-biological mama support groups. Um, We're opening a single mama support group. So slowly supporting women worldwide through the process. Um, And some women, just because they want to meet other families, just like them. Um, On the other side of it, we like you you know anyway, because we've been chatting, um, we're doing a lot of work with the NHS, uh, Royal College of Midwives and Health Education England um, and the government to change policies to support LGBT plus women through Mm -hmm. healthcare and pregnancy and childbirth. Um, So a bit bit of politics and a bit of policy change and supporting as a whole and celebrating it's it's very much needed isn't it that's the thing we wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't needed to be done so you know i think it's it's really refreshing to see a counterpart supporting another element of our community who needs that support and you know that's that's an amazing uh thing to be doing Mm -hmm. go on michael no 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 crack on carry on no it's true what you said because there was a real gap for women like us so when we first started eight years ago looking to start a family we knew one woman who gave us a little bit of basic advice other than that we didn't know anyone we knew of no other families on our scene locally where we lived that had children or were starting to have children and then as it progressed we just made a lot of mistakes we had no support um emotionally mentally physically um, to just ask those basic questions that you really want to know. Mm-hmm. Um, and by the time we had Stanley, we were consistently being contacted by women who wanted to know how we had the kids, um, how much it cost, you know, the pros and cons of different clinics or banks or what they needed to do 
and the process, not even just fertility, but the process of starting a family in general. Mm -hmm. And by the time we had Stanley, I was like, this is something we really need to do. We need to support women so that they don't go through what, what we've gone through where we had mm -hmm. no one. Mm -hmm. So for me, that, that's the main goal, knowing that there are women worldwide that go, oh, thank God, I know someone that can help me through that challenging time. And it's a, it's a very difficult time, as you know, mm -hmm. starting a family and going through the process. And it's really frightening as well. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, well, I think it's amazing. And you know what I what I um what I love about speaking to someone else that does a similar thing for, for like Wes said for, for the other side for us is that I don't think people realize how much it's needed and yeah. how isolating or how there's a lack of information uh, or or just how much we want our children to mix with other families that have two mums or or one mum or two dads or one dad. Yeah, as 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 much as um you know a mom and a dad family, it's just really important that our kids also see children from same sex families. Yeah, it's really yeah. important. So when we have our UK meet, um, and we did, we've done it in the last two years, and not last year, the year before when we had our first one, Dottie ran into the room and she saw these children and she turned and she said, "Mummy, they've got two mummies just like me, and some of them have even oh. one mummy." And, I'm, I'm not the only one now. This is so cool. And for me, that was like, oh, like she feels validated. She feels like visible. And we're yeah. not visible. We're only visible at certain times of the year when certain big brands, you know, want to push it. And mm -hmm. that's great. And the visibility is great. But at the same time, we want to be visible in everyday life. And we want yeah. people to normalize our families and see us walking down the street and think, oh, okay, two, yeah. two mums or two dads or two parents. Yeah, and not even bat an eyelid. That would be the ideal. End. Yeah. We're, we're that, well, that, that's what we're all striving for, do you know. So, um, fair, fair play. So, tell us um, a little bit about how lockdown has been. At first, at first, <laughs> was, at first, it was like, oh gosh, this is going to be hard. This is going to be really hard. Um, and very frightening, I think. I don't know how you two felt, but it just, yeah. when you were reading the news and you were seeing different reports coming out um, and it got really frightening and especially having kids mm -hmm. um, and then supporting women that were pregnant um, or trying to conceive through the process and women that had their treatment cancelled, mid, mid flow, women that were running out of time, that coupled with being in the house was quite frightening and having our eldest say well mummy why can't I go to school and what's happening and you know overhearing conversations with family it was it was really really frightening mm -hmm. and testing testing yeah testing. yeah it, it was definitely testing wasn't it yeah and it was and I think it's the unknown and it was something we'd never faced before mm -hmm. and there's and I think there's there's lots of elements of stress that you know, there wasn't, we weren't being hit by one element of stress. We've been hit by lots of different elements of stress, yeah. whether it be health, whether it be our family, whether it be work, whether mm -hmm. it be, you know, lots of different ways of being hit. And I don't think whatever you, we've never used, been used to such a stressful time. I and think. all condensed as well. And what did you, what did you tell your kids? How did you explain it? I think Stanley was a bit kind of bewildered because all of a sudden I mean I work from home um, for my main job so I've got quite a lot of flexibility so I'm always in and out there's never a routine when I'm here but for him he was like yes mummy's here so <laughs> I was here all the time so he's been like a Klingon he's been yeah. for me I walk out of the room to go to the toilet and it's like the world's ended mm -hmm. um, which is very cute but at the same time sometimes you just need the loo um <laughs> With Dottie, it's more a case of she wanted to know why she couldn't see her friends. Um, she was worried about family. And then obviously we've got family that are really high risk. So it was a case we couldn't see them at all. Um, so it was just like, why are we, why can't we, what's, what is this virus and what is it doing? And she's very astute. She's like a grandma. She's like a 90 year old woman. So she was like, okay, so if that means I have to wear a mask, what does the mask do? Does it protect me? And I'm like, oh, I don't even know this. I don't even know this right now. Give mummy a chance. But it's strange for them because she was like, I don't understand why I can't, why is this virus so scary? And you don't want to have a mental breakdown in front of your kids because at that time, at the beginning, it was really, really scary. Yeah. Um, but yeah, at the beginning, it was just, I think no one really knew what to do at the beginning. 
no all, all what to say for the best because it kept it was changing you know it was it was it, it was all always moving so um what's what what's got you all through it what's got you through lockdown i, I know you've been hitting the gym at your home gym because you seem to be in it constantly <laughs> Do you know what? It was, I think when we, at the beginning, was really frightened and then we kind of got into our routine um, during the week, like Monday to Friday, Stacey homeschools Dottie um, and then I look after and play with Stanley and do little bits of learning with him um, and she really enjoys it. She's like a teacher's pet. She'll kill me for saying that, but she really enjoys it. So they do a full day. Um, we all get up at the same time, have breakfast at the same time, Monday to Friday and I think that's really helped the kids. So that's mm -hmm. kind of got us through it because... They know Monday to Friday, it's school time. And yeah. at nine o'clock, we sit down and then I'll take Stanley for a walk um, and then we'll play or whatever. But that's kind of helped with the, the routine. And then weekends, get up a bit later, if possible. Um, and then we can just have fun all day on Saturday and Sunday and watch films and stuff. But for me, having a purpose of that, but also keeping fit. So I thought I can either go one way and just eat absolute rubbish <laughs> or... I can just, I had like a week of just doing that. And I was like, no, I've got to control myself. So yeah. then I thought if I hit the gym in the garage and just keep doing it a little bit each day, it will keep you motivated. And I think mentally it's kept me in a good place the whole yeah. way. Yeah. I think you go either one of two ways, don't you? Yeah, I, I, I probably well, we kind of went the wrong way, and now we're trying. To... <laughs> <laughs> I spent ten weeks eating pork pies and cheese. Literally, every time I opened the fridge, I was like, oh. So um, we're just running now, and 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 you're right. The, the headspace that you get, and just you know, having that time to yourself, just to you know, get out there and just because I I think you know who would have, mm -hmm. have thought that you know being at home with your kids for ten weeks, playing in the garden, lovely sunshine would actually affect your mental health, and I think. For me, it has slightly because I kind of, at the, you know, the beginning of the week feel actually quite challenged in terms of how I feel mentally. And I think that's... We've been know. struggling with Mondays. Mondays have been really tough. I don't... Awful. Yeah. Do you find it as well? Like I could cry on a Monday. Yes. Just... That's how we are. Yeah. And, and a few people I've spoken to on these have said the same thing. Yeah. We actually stopped working on a Monday because... We were just getting, we weren't productive at all because we were just quite down and, you just, know, just couldn't get motivated. So we just took an extra day where we then focus and spend another day with the kids. And then by Tuesday, we're back on it. Tuesdays were really productive and then we just cr carried on. It's really, really weird. Even though half the time, some days you'd go, what day is it? And you'd literally have to check the calendar or your phone and go, don't even know what day it is. And that's kind of the Wednesday, the Thursday. No yes. clue what day it is. <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> <laughs> exactly um so we know we know how your lockdown's been we, we know what's getting you through it which which um i can definitely sense some similarities how would you if you could use choose a few words to describe lockdown how would you describe it um testing there's mm -hmm. times and you'll get it that they just don't want to learn or they don't want to listen and they have complete meltdowns and they always tend to happen on the same day. They both want to start on the same day and you just have to take a breath, like either walk out the room or just weep a little bit mm -hmm. and then pull it together. Um, and then there'll be other days when it's great, but there are times when you just think, oh my gosh, this is so hard. Mm -hmm. um, and then other days when you think, yeah, I'm winning at parenting, but it's testing. Yeah. Um, memorable i think it's taught us to appreciate things more together mm. so really yeah. little things like now we can leave the house because we haven't left the house in three months literally mm. other than to get a click and collect or the local nature reserve around the corner taking them and looking at flowers or you know mm. looking at the beads really really little things that mm. they pick up and then they know and then they'll know a flower name really little things and taking the time to sit down and eat together properly because mm -hmm. we're always rushing we always you know I'm always working or whatever mm -hmm. taking that time to enjoy each other which has been really really nice because mm -hmm. three months of me being at home I'll never experience that again no so, no I agree it has been memorable um and then roller coaster 
because it has just been yeah. there yeah. are good days, there are bad days, there are days where you could cry, and then there yeah. are days where you feel so lucky that you're so healthy. Um, yeah. When you read the news, and I think there's so much unrest going on at the minute, it's a mm. really scary time mm. to be a parent. Yeah, yeah. Ag- agreed, definitely. They're they're lovely. I like those. Um, I definitely um appreciating the small things is like you Tallulah's planted at the start of lockdown she scattered a load of seeds like yeah. loads of them and they're oh, they're flowers. wildflowers because we've got quite a wild from gone so she's put and they're all up now and she's like oh, I planted these I plant and and it, it's just so lovely to see and she's experienced that which is really yeah. cute and I don't think it's that we didn't do those things before but I think we actually appreciate them more now because mm-hmm. I think previously they just blended into life and life was such so fast paced and we just got on with it and never really stopped to think about the, the little things and I think yeah. being at home for such a long time uh, has allowed us to do that and appreciate yeah. it yeah agreed and I think as well like doing really different things so we've found that because obviously where Dottie's at school she has to do school projects so taking the time and having fun doing those with her mm-hmm. but she's had to do like a space project she's had to do a turtle for her under the sea project and they're all really fun and you you get to have more fun with them and see what they really do at school and seeing her develop because I was thinking it's going to be hell because mm-hmm. she's such a diva we're never going to be able to homeschool her and she has been shockingly amazing so if you're watching this in like 20 years time you were good <laughs> that's good that's but, cute yeah, yeah. How, how old is she she's just turned six. Oh, bless her she's gonna give us <laughs> it just gets it just gets more and more <laughs> every year it's good girls girls are hard hard work don't you yeah. find you find yeah. easy. Um, well, Duke's just, he's had his challenges. Um, mm. They're very different. Everyone always told us, a oh, boys are so cuddly. He hates you cuddling him. He pulls away. Yeah, he pulls away. Unless, unless he wants one and then you've got to give him a cuddle right then. It's like, cuddle me. Yeah, yeah. I think it's our stubble. Yeah, I think I think it, because he's got <laughs> that thing to do. I have the same problem. <laughs> Yeah, bless him. Yeah. Um, so, music for us, you know, our Apple Home Hub has been used as Spotify and our Apple Music. Why we've got two accounts, Christ knows. Um, but music's been important to us because yeah. Tallulah's learned how to play and you know, oh. Siri, play so and so. The new Lady Gaga album's been epic in our house. What has been your soundtrack? That's our soundtrack. That is ours, yeah. Yeah, Lady Gaga. Um, Wake Me Up by Avicii has been mine. Wake Me Up When It's All Over, because sometimes you just, it's just such a good song. But then other times you're like, please, just wake me up when it's finished. <laughs> yeah. You feel like, oh, like that. Um, Stacey's would be Own It by Stormzy. She loves it. So she oh, really? It the house. I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, I love this song. Let's just own it. And I'm like, okay. Um, and then another one that she's been listening to the last few days is Bored in the House. But that tends to be... Uh, when she's stressed, so you just, uh, you just... Uh, and that's a t- that reminds me of TikTok. It just <laughs> reminds me of TikTok. That song does. Yeah. Um, in terms of what you've experienced and how you've um, both been parenting, has it has lockdown made you realise anything about how you both parent, either individually or together, or how you've come together? Um. I think for me, it's more a case of I, I now realise I need to slow down. Mm-hmm, so yeah. I need to stop rushing and I'm always doing a million one things and maybe take the time to actually listen to what the kids are saying and not be like, hold on, mummy's doing something, um, which tends to be the case because I'm always running around doing something for work. Um, with Stacey, she's really good, you know, with the homeschooling and stuff. I think I think we've done okay. Um, mm-hmm. the kids have only had... A handful of meltdowns where it's been really really difficult um and testing but for me it's maybe maybe the listening and taking the time to give them that opportunity because they're little people as well so if yeah. they don't like they're getting listened to they get frustrated mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. so maybe listening a bit more and not rushing and would you do anything differently um 
No, not really. Strangely enough, I think I thought we would have, if you'd have talked to me at the beginning of lockdown, I would have said, oh, I don't know how we're going to get through this. Mm -hmm. Um, I think with the homeschooling and having that routine in the week has given Dottie a focus and Stacey because she's always got to be OCD. So everything's got to be spotless. Everything's got to be done right. Um, And then it's given me more time with Stanley as well to teach him. So he's come on as well with his writing and his drawing and his Mm -hmm. words and stuff. So, yeah, yeah, it's amazing in a way. It's a gift. Mm -hmm. But um, at the same time, yeah. Yeah, I don't think we would have spent as much quality time with Duke at the early stages of his life like we have in lockdown because yeah. he would have been in nursery, would have been working, you know, more or less full time. And, you know, at the t- you know, that was acceptable at the time, but I think we struggle now. Yeah. To, back to, to normal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because I think we would miss. Miss that. And I think it made us realise how much we would have potentially missed if we... Yeah hadn't have been there and been in lockdown because mm-hmm. he's changed he's changed yeah. massively from the beginning of lockdown to now hasn't he oh yeah, well he's on his feet he's doing so many more he's clapping things. his hands he's you know and you're actually both getting to see it at the same time which yeah. most parents don't get that privilege no. do they no no no, no. and no. um we've, we've touched on homeschooling i think i think your wife has clearly killed it and stormed it and he's literally no. i'm like <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't do it I don't have the patience. Katie, she was, uh, when she was here for a week, she was doing some of her schoolwork and it, it, it was like in a different language to me. You know, I just, I did, she? she's 16. 16 in September. Yeah. The maths would have just blown my mind. I would have gone, oh, oh you teacher. <laughs> I'm Get like, a Siri. Zoom call with your teacher because, you know, this is not going to give you the answer. That's the thing. I think teachers, they need like a pay rise or. They need, they need staff. something. Yeah. I think we've all we've all realised this. I think I think what we've realised is how much they've stepped up to support all of the kids yeah. at home and okay. still give them that continuity of education uh, that, that that they can mm-hmm. given the circumstances. So. Definitely. Um, so finally, then before we finish off, and you can remind everybody about how they can find you, how they can follow you, um, give us your your high and your low, or your peak and your pit of lockdown, please. Um. Our highs, I think the NHS claps on a Thursday. We mm-hmm. really enjoyed that. The kids loved it. Um, and I think it's memorable because when we look back when they're older and we go, do you remember those three or four months we had to be indoors, me, you and mummy and mummy, and just had to stay in that whole time. And we used to come out and they come out with their tambourines or their triangles or whatever <laughs> instruments oh. they had at that time. And they used to love it. And our neighbours and friends, um, who are also a lesbian couple, um, one works for the fire uh, fire service and one works for the ambulance service. So sometimes they'd be coming back from shift and we'd be able to clap for them. Oh, we'd wow. Be a bit emotional, but then we'd say to Dottie, these are the people you're clapping for. Katie and Georgia are the people that are saving lives. She'd be like, wow, that's amazing. They're real life heroes. It, you know, it gives a bit more weight to what we're actually doing. Really? Um, and the worst is not being able to see family. So mm-hmm. we're a really, really close family, both sides. So having FaceTime and Zoom is great, but not being able to physically cuddle yeah. anyone. Um, mm-hmm. And because so many are high risk, we haven't seen, we literally haven't seen anyone and it's been horrible. But yeah. again, we're lucky, we're safe, we're healthy. I think that's what we've been trying to remind ourselves through the whole thing, that there are people that either have lost their lives, people that are really ill, or there are people that are trying to become parents that now have lost the opportunity. And I think that's an awful thing to yeah. have happened through this as well, which you probably know too. Yeah, it's, 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 it's those people that, again, people not trying to conceive may not even understand how many chances have been lost or, you know, or, or just the heartache of having fertility treatment postponed you know, let alone cancelled. It's it's That's stressful good. enough, yeah. As we all know, um, you you know, it's so lovely chatting to you. Tell us a little bit more where people can find you, what they need to do to follow you. Um, so we are on Instagram, the LGBT Mummies Tribe. In between each word is the lowercase comma. Dash. Yeah. Um, we're also on Facebook and we have our support groups on both Instagram and Facebook and our website will be live in the next few weeks as well. So if you're looking for advice or a community to contact, you can come through there as well. 
incredible we'll put all of that on the uh, i'll put it all in the comments as well so i'll put all, all the links in there as well no no problem at all and then you are one of our advocates uh, for the Modern Family Show, which I'm is excited. amazing. We're really excited to have you guys on board for that. You're uh, doing you're doing so much for us, so thank you. Yeah, oh, we're, really, we're really excited to have you there because I think there's going to be, you know, uh, a real high proportion of people who need your support there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, you know, it, it's really important we have a very diverse range of advocates, you being the one supporting uh, same-sex female couples and uh, single female couples. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of, uh, support I think that uh, and we're really excited about the show generally mm -hmm. uh, you know at the beginning of lockdown there were some doubts whether the show would happen or not but now it's it's full it's, steam it's accelerating now where um, it's really sorry. picking up again and we're just uh, watching government guidelines about how, what our management plan needs to be to manage COVID during the show so you know we'll wait and see what that means but yeah generally amazed at having you guys down as, as really, a really excited. and you're kind of set the path for going forward it's the first time it's ever been done to this level and this stage so you're groundbreaking it's really oh, really good really well thank, thank yeah, you no, thank you but i think uh we we want to do this for future years and we want to grow it and it's it's going to be with the help and support of people like yourselves for that's sure. going to enable us to grow it and enable us to support more and more people and more and more members of the community so you know it's a joint effort i think it yeah, is no, we're here to support and help so Thank you, great. darling. Laura Rose, you are adorable. Thank you so much for coming and uh, having a chat to us. Um, follow these these ladies because they're just fabulous. Um, thank you so so much, and uh, we will speak to you soon. Take care, darling. Bye. See you later. Bye. 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 If you like what you've seen so far, head over to our website at www.twodaddies.co.uk. There you can read our blog and subscribe to our newsletter. Or find us on Facebook and Instagram, simply searching at twodads.u.k.